Holland Sports is back on the menu. We're in Eastbourne, a distant land that is, ironically, the away ground we've had to visit the most while making this show. The last time we were with Parks and Company, they were soundly beaten by a rampant ringmer, and with disquiet in the dressing room, the outlook was more than a little bleak. In the two games since, Holland kept a clean sheet in a goalless draw away to Cookfield Rangers before hitting Linfield for six to reach the top five of the Mid-Sussex Prem. Yeah, I think Ringma was one of those points in time where we knew that everything had to change. Sometimes things have to go really wrong for a change to occur. Went away to Cookfield. Um, it wasn't perfect, but it was definitely a step up from where we were the week before at Ringma and introduced a new system which they adapted to on that first day brilliantly. We move on to a home game against Sporting Linfield where we raced into a really good lead playing the way that we wanted to play. It was the first time I think we'd put out a starting 11 where we trusted every single one of that starting 11. I think the next game is, and I don't think we'll, we'll put too much pressure on the boys about it because it's away at Eastbourne, but it's a huge game for us in terms of we haven't yet won away from home. It'd be nice to win that and not get anyone saying oh, It's a it? long, long way to go. It's a long, long way to go. It is indeed a 120 mile round trip to Eastbourne during a petrol crisis that's doing an awfully good job of showing how stupid human beings can be. At least it offers a trip down memory lane on the way, most notably when Peter Barkley upset a referee and was forced to stand behind a fence. I'm going to the FA about you, your language is atrocious. But here in September of 2021, travelling down to Eastbourne has become a rather big ask. Con, what happened? Parents let you down. Parents always let me down. Oh, mate. It was just so confident. No worries, parents have got me next morning. Can anyone give me a lift? Meanwhile, according to former Charlwood striker George Smith, the fart that Charlwood defender Wardy had released a year earlier was still lingering in changing room nine. Go in there. <laughs> still stinks, mate. <laughs> But that stuff's all in the past. For this time out, Barks has a team that is yet to see him get sent to the fences or been forced to deal with an atomic fart. This young Holland sports side is on a roll and keeping the momentum going against a struggling Eastbourne side desperate to get their first win is of paramount importance. Yeah, yeah just straight up top, him and George. Steve, mate, you're free at the back. Steve or mids are gonna be double pivots in there, yeah? Yeah, good spot, Connor. It's a bit different. All right, then, boys. There's today's team. Um, Michael, Michael back in goal. Back four the same. Wardy, Charlie, Aaron, Connor. George coming on the right. Mids and Steve in there. Macker on the left. Joe up top, leaving Ollie, Luke, Charlie and Jack on the bench. Obviously, a long journey and a stressful journey with the world ending and lack of petrol. Those boys, as I always say, hungry to get on, some of them trained in the week, some of them put a time in the group and went out running. So if you've got that starting shirt, like I always say, do it proud and, and earn it and keep it because we're not here, we haven't done all this journey to turn up and take our foot off the gas, okay? The first thing I'll say is, if they win today, they're level with us, all right? So just keep that in your mind, it's a tight, tight league, you've got to come in and be focused. We talk about our personal battles, you have to win your personal battles. The focus today is being hard to beat, one to 11, we're solid defensively. We're really tough and hard to break down. We don't need to be go chasing anything. Be patient in possession. The quality last week was unreal and it started to really show later in the game, in the latter stages. I wanna roll out with that chip on our shoulder. We've come up a division and we're here not to make up numbers, we're here to get a run going. This will be our second, you know, potentially back-to-back -back win. Leaving September strong. We finish this month strong, get into October and really attack that league. But it's a big, big three points and you have to forget about everything else now and go out there and be focused for each other. Okay, boys? Let's get after it. <laughs> out on the balls then, boys. Leave everything in here. We're locking up. Drinks taped up. Yeah, good. Good atmosphere and fair play to them. You know, no talk of the petrol crisis and all that in here. They all kind of dusted it off, but... That was stressful, even for me and Mike today, I had to get some fuel. 
a lot of them playing Sunday league football, which I didn't know about. Um, I've tried to kind of persuade them not to. I don't know how strong I go with that. They obviously love doing it. But James Barker, who started, played, done really well, and then goes and gets injured on a Sunday. Steve, one of my best players, injured on a Sunday. So it's just frustrating where you think this takes priority um, and they're still of the mindset where they enjoy the Sundays. They're young, I get that. I can't stop them. But as a manager, it's really frustrating to have finished the game with no injuries and think I can have the same team again. And then you get to train and it's like his ankle was smashed at 6-0 up against the dog and duck. Uh, you know, so it's, it's difficult to take. But I guess that kind of builds into the changing culture, not smoking in tracksuits, turning up prepared. We've really worked on having a solid defensive shape and then when we expand with the ball, we change into a more offensive shape. Um, it's worked really well and I think, as I said, the, some guy in America, Adam Reeks, emailed me and gave me some, some help, somebody that watches um, the channel. And it's just got me thinking and made me realise there's a lot more for me to learn and develop. And I think that him giving me that information and me thinking a bit more um, differently about the game is is evolving um, my understanding. And I feel like instead of being a rigid shape, it allows us to be a bit more fluid. As a manager, you know, it could all fall apart today. So that's that's the deep burning concern. But um, I've just got to make sure they're focused and they understand what we want today. And we want to be back in here, as always, with three points. I'm, um, I'm just buzzing, it's very rare that I can get, well definitely the same 11 and the same back four. Mm. I was so impressed last week and the way you led and communicated and when I turn up here and I've got Michael back in there and you four in front of him, well, I think that's really solid and I don't think we should be giving a lot away. If it breaks down big time, it might be Sam, you say George, I'll do it because I'm over here, you go back to that one, George come in here and you, so don't be afraid. If you're out of position, because all three of you can do all three of those jobs. If you want a first five, just hit it in here. That's absolutely fine as well. All right, first and foremost, we don't concede. But enjoy it when you get up there. Class, OK? Yes. But this is where we're, these boys haven't been coached as much, Mike. So, yeah, but you've been brilliant. The lads are buzzing about having you here. Good lad. You've got a shirt, you're a key player. There's about 100 lads in the reserves. We'll be dying to have that shirt today. You've got a shirt, you're a key player. Now, what I don't want, what I don't want is us starting lethargic here. I know it's hot. But the key message is we start fast. That was better in that, at the end there, the volume and the tempo and the way we're moving the ball. Chip on our shoulder. Think how you feel when you've got a chip on your shoulder, when you're annoyed. Someone at work's annoyed you. You're running after somebody around KFC, Aaron Nolan, right? Think how you feel when you're annoyed. Don't come here and be passive. And some of you got opportunities here. Some people come in like mids, clinging onto it. They're clinging onto shirts, lads. Everyone's getting opportunities here. My favorite expression, Mike's sick of hearing it. The talk is so cheap. You've got a shirt today, Connor, Wardy. I've shown you boys, if you do it, you keep it. If you do it, you keep it. If you don't, someone else will take your place. Make sure you keep it today and make sure we leave here and we have that journey home with three points and our first away victory as a unit. Okay, come on. Let's go to the range. Up, 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 Connor. Connor, can we play? Can we play? Have a look, Mike. Have a kick. Pieces, pieces, Steve, mids. Come on, Maka. Time, time, time. Sharper. On a surprisingly hot day, the 4G pitch is heating up a lot quicker than either team, with loose passes defining the opening stages. Unlucky mids. The hook's pulled over the top from Eastbourne's Josh Bryant nearly plays in Phil Broom, but goalkeeper Mike has a degree of bravery that belies his experience. Come on, sharpen up! Help it on, help it on! Sammy! An old-fashioned long ball and flick-on plays in Joe Hill for a one-on-one. -on -one. We're not convinced Joe has had any formal coaching, unless it was from Kevin Lisby. Set, 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 Sammy. Too late now. Keep it, keep it. Tight. The other side. Good talking. Steve, 
Holland are struggling to maintain possession. Pressure on playmaker Steve and too many long balls appear to be the issue. Keep it! Keep it, Aaron! Keep the ball! Options! That's what I've talked to him about every time. Macca, shorten it up! Shuffle! 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 Hold! Hold, Joe! Don't do that, Joe! Hold! Box is micromanaging the Holland press, and even though the players are following instruction, long balls have the potential to spring the traps. Straight line, Harry, cover him. Man. Well done, Charlie. Sam, you're the eight. Sam, you're the eight. Solid starts from defenders Harry, Charlie, and Aaron are giving Holland a platform on which to build. Great ball. A fantastic flick from Sam Cockrell gives Joe another opening. Joe is terrorising the defence, but his finishing is costing him. Deliver warning! Great ball, yes! A devilish ball from fullback Harry Ward is screaming out for a header, but former Woking man Sam Cockrell can't quite convert. But that's three or four good chances. Let's test it. Holland's attacking triumvirate are causing problems across the line, with George Smith giving fullback James Unwin existential pain. Brilliant, George. Brilliant, Connor. The game's first flashpoint arrives when Joe Jones sides through the back of Sam. The opposition bench claimed that Joe slipped. Ref, that's... Fell over. He still fell over, you can see that from a mile off. <laughs> yeah, but that's like, that's like me two footing you in the face and going, oh, well, you got hit in the not head. Red, not... It is Rob, though, that. That's potentially a red, mate. Oh, he slipped into the challenge, you mean? Yeah, no, he's come through the back of him. We're going to be brutally honest here. This clip doesn't actually lead anywhere. We just really like Steve Panay's footwork. Well done, Steve. While Barks is busy announcing what his favourite recent BBC drama is, Holland are piling on the pressure. Time! 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 A missed kick of a clearance sees the ball drop at Joe Hill's feet. Shots! Oh! Yeah. Yeah. Well done, Joey! We have the pen. Yeah. Joe rides the desperate lunge and gives his side the lead. Mids, well done keeping the ball. We can be a bit tighter. And it's a little sloppy at times we're passing, boys. Come on. Let's be really secure. Keep the ball. Immediately after the restarts, Holland go for the jugular as if they have some sort of neck fetish. Right area. Steve Panay dissects the Eastbourne defence and Luke Macca McLean fires in the second. Yes, Macca! Stevie P! Steve! That's class! Time warning! Drive! 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 George up top! George up top! Connor, stay! Drive! You got no one warning! You got no one warning! Wardy and George are rampant, tearing Eastbourne's left side apart. Back stick! Wardy, unbelievable today, Wardy. Deep into the second half, Eastbourne muster their first real threat on goal. Well, calling it a threat might be something of a stretch. Goal side, Charlie. Well done, George. No foul, no foul. Some very impressive footwork from James Unwin creates a much better opening for the home side. But the shot is no problem for Mike in goal. Great pass, protect it! Stronger! Macker is barged off the ball too easily, much to his manager's irritation. You'd have a stadium full of people there going, he's going to foul him. You know, he's lost the ball, he's fallen over and then he's... Oh yeah, Gary Neville, one mistake leads to another mistake. Yeah, yeah. No cross! Rolling, rolling! Go! Oh. So he's still there, still going, still... 
still going, still going, Joe. When the ball defies being an inanimate object and remains on the pitch to give Joe another chance, the striker manages the worst shot since my friend Ben struck an effort in FIFA that went through the roof of the stadium. On the stroke of half time, Josh Bryant sees his header wander wide of the post and Holland take a two goal lead into the break. Grab your drinks, over to the corner. We've been, it's like we've got a flat back four sometimes and we're saying get up. You've got license to go and go and join in. Just go and join in. George can then come off that wing and join in. What you should be doing every time, if he gets the ball, overlap him. And what's happening is it just creates space in the whole game. You did it there with George and suddenly we've got acres doing it. We don't need to overplay and rush things. A couple of times we've got the ball and we're hooking channels when actually we just go, do you know what? Stop there. We'll just play back. We'll keep it. Remember what Barks always says about that money in the bank? Hot day. I mean, they haven't really troubled us in any way at all. You imagine if we had a 10 minute spell of keeping the ball and then playing them just running around. Then when you start clipping channels, they're not chasing anyone, are they? Yeah, Mike's and everything there, boys. What I will say is the word is kind of hesitant at times, which means a lot of us don't protect the ball which leads to a little bit of frustration. There's a little bit of sloppiness at times in terms of taking care. The attitude's been absolutely superb. Remember, you're our team and we want you to do the best we can do and win games. That's what we want. We've got all of your backs 100%. So when we say these things, it's just about improving us. I think we're better, some of us out there. I think we're dangling legs, we're a little bit sloppy. We're giving cheap fouls away because of frustration. Again, like Linfield, they want corners, they want free kicks. Don't give it to them, boys. If someone's got the ball in front of you, get up their ass. don't let them turn, pop it off, done. If the ball's coming to you, make yourself as big as possible, Joe, Maka, Sam, George, and protect the ball for us and play. Or switch of play there, George coming this side, Joe going out wide, little rotation in there. Uh, Mid, you're gonna go in the little cam there. Lukey's coming on alongside Steve. Luke, uh, Sam's gonna have a little rest, but we'll come back on. But, you know, like I keep saying, the attitude's class, but there are little things we can improve. And if you're looking at kind of the level we're looking at in terms of attitude and application, have a look at this bloke here, who a bomb didn't play, he's been on the bench, first class, everything's simple. He puts his art on the, on the line for all of you. Have a look at him if you want someone to try and aspire to be like, because he's done it all game, he won't dig anyone out, he won't get on the ref, and he just does it every single week for the team. Let's all be a bit more like Wardy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Connor, no comments. <laughs> no turn, no foul. Despite being specifically instructed not to give any fouls away, the opening minutes of the second half are littered with Eastbourne free kicks. They, they've gone. No foul, Con, no foul, Con. Our foul count's a joke, Mike. Stop giving fouls away! That's it now! No more! No more! Stand up! Unfortunately for Holland, long-standing midfielder Luke Harrison, who's just back from injury, didn't get the no-foul memo. God. Luke sees a kick takedown right under the nose of the referee, brings his return to the first team to an end just four minutes after coming on. Got the ball, ref, though. Ref, got the ball, though. Head up, mate. Head up, head up, head up. 4-4-1 for a minute, 4-4-1 for a minute. The third dismissal of the season yet again forces Barks and Mike to react with a new playing system. So, so we're a three, you can do that with him if you want. Or I would just give the whip, try and get some deliveries in, but just yeah. give us some energy, okay? Yeah. Ref, I'm going to make a change, please. Charlie, Aaron, Connor's a three. Wardy, wing back here. Keep your shirt on, now you might come back on. Where you back? While the coaches do their best to plan for this new eventuality, what they can't do is foresee the worst corner ever seen outside of West Baltimore. It's take the shot to no one, just to a space. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Connor, what was that? Despite the numerical disadvantage, Holland are dangerous on the counter, although George's shot selection wasn't ideal. Keep the ball! Lads, we got 10 men, we gotta keep the ball! 
Yet again, Joe has a chance to threaten, but he doesn't manage to get a shot away this time. To relieve the pressure, Harry Ward steams forward like a fat man whose Five Guys order has just been served. Ref! Oh my god! Oh my god! That's horrendous! Oh my god! Kev, you can't do that! You gotta stop coaching them like that! We didn't capture the reaction of the home bench when Luke got himself sent off earlier, so Mike's reaction here doesn't have any context. Scissors all sorts! Jesus! Oh my. No turn! No turn, mids! Well done! Joe, oh, go! Joe, run! Run him, Joe! Oh, Joe Hill has more chances than M. Night Shyamalan's career, but just like the man who made the happening and glass, he's wasting them all. It's time for a drinks break pep talk. You right, Joe? You right? Yeah. Do you want a 10 minute breather and come back at the end? You're not going to remember the chance you missed. You can't focus on them. All right? The keeper's done well. It's one of those days. But you've still got 20 minutes to get two goals here. They're so high, Joe. Joe, they're so high. Any little ball and you're in. I'm telling you. You're staying on because you're that threat. All right? No one's looking at Joe going, hey, should the score? Everyone's thinking, Joe's such a threat. He's such a threat. They're really worried about you. They're really worried about you. Please. Don't beat yourself up. I'll be honest with you, if you're not good enough or it's not working, Joe, I will, I'll tell you straight. I'm not just gonna, you know, build you up all the time. You've had a couple of chances, so what? You're in the right positions, next one let fly. Promise me? The drinks break allows both teams to reset and it's Eastbourne who take advantage. Josh Bryant gets goal side of Aaron Nolan and the defender tumbles his opponent to the ground. It's a penalty to Eastbourne. Cameron Apted clips his ball under the crossbar. Cameron Apted, <laughs> fuck this. Cameron Apted clips his penalty. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm just going to leave this in. Let's go in, boys. Keep the ball. Heads up. Heads up. They're still chasing. Eastbourne are getting more of the ball, but as has been the case all game, they can't get into a position to threaten Mike's goal. Keep the width. Oh, well done, mate. Great ball. Oh, do you know what? Time! We're getting into some end to end stuff now, with Holland applying more pressure than the team with 11 men. Time! No foul. Time. Sam and Steve combine to play in Joe, and Holland have a chance to finish it once and for all. Ollie! Go on, Ollie, finish! Oh, Ollie! Ollie does well to rob the goalkeeper, but his flick sees the ball drop over the bar and the game is still on. Relax, Connor! Go on, Ollie! Go on, Ollie! Roll him! Drive! Well done, Drive, well Ollie! Drive, Ollie! Great ball, Ollie! This time it's George Smith on the end of the pass, but yet another chance is wasted for Holland. In the fourth minute of injury time, Eastbourne pin Holland back and create one final chance. It goes! Oh my god. What a battle. That's a good battle, mate. Jesus, yeah, Tim, you killed us, isn't it? Well done, mate, eh? Absolute Leo the Lionheart. Hey, well done, mate. Well one, well one of done. my worst games. Well done. No, I don't care. I don't care. I love you. You've got nothing wrong with me, Aaron. Love you. We're not showing any of your good bits because somebody's going to come and sign you, Wardy. Yeah, unbelievable, though, you. You're so annoying. Yeah, but you were unbelievable. You were unbelievable. Get in there, boys! Big, big half! Get in there! Boys, get in there! 
doing there? That's a massive three boys with ten men. That's massive, lads. Absolute quality in there, eh? Come on. Big three points. Big three points. Get those tunes on. Come on, lads. Hey, big three boys with ten men. Quality. Fighting for each other. Boys, we have to think about our discipline. We have to focus. But the character and heart there, I mean, I wish we would stop getting people sent off. That would be good. But the character and heart, that's a massive three points. You've worked all week. You've got no petrol in your car. Let's enjoy it. Get in there, lads. We won't talk too much, but I think we know there are things we need to work on to improve. MOM, Wardy, well done, Wardy. Boys, I, I will say, listen, I will say, we work, we, lads, we work on those throw-ons and then we don't do it. We switch off at times, we ball watch at times and go get in goal side. And we are disciplined, and I'm not blaming Luke because loads of people have done it. But for all of us, I think we're agreed, if we're really going to become an, a, a decent outfit, the discipline has to be a lot, lot better for all of us. Yes, ref, no problem. Ref, yes, liner, no problem. The silly fouls, all that stuff. We know we want a county cup run. I want to win that county cup, lads, which means we've got to have discipline and we've got to do the right things. When the ball goes dead, we switch on and we get in goal side. But the fight for each other there, immense. It's a big, big three points. We've got five big games in October now, which I think are all winnable games for us, if we apply ourselves. All winnable games. There's no training this week, but everyone needs to post a three or five K run in the group. Agreed? Yeah. You've got a whole week to post it. But boys, Big, big half of football. What's our team song? Come on, what is it, lads? Nothing. Every little thing. It's going to be all right. You know, the lads were struggling to get here. It's, it's, it's a 60 miles, 120 mile round trip. So we had all that to deal with. We get here. There actually was first class. They put it to one side. There was no external factors. There was no mention of it. It's a red hot day. And they just dealt with it and we created lots of chances, 2-0 up. Mack with a great finish after I kind of, you know, laid it on the line to him before the game. Um, and he, he stepped up with that finish definitely. And then suddenly you go from thinking, right, 3-4-0 to we need to show some heart and character. And they did that. So we, uh, I don't think we played as well as we have done in the two previous games. We were a bit, I said at half time, a bit robotic in what we were doing. It wasn't as fluid as we wanted it to be. but. I don't want to give away too many secrets about what we're doing, but certainly we've evolved in what we're trying to do. Um, you know, it's, it's testing the players and it's testing them to keep focused on the game and understanding their positions and what we need them to do. Yeah, it was good fun. So it's a bit different for me going from like a winger to right back role, but I'm really starting to to enjoy it now. Like, because Bark's given me the freedom to move forward, get into some attacking roles, which I really enjoy. So, because I provide that width now and then George cuts inside. It gives me an opportunity to get on the ball a lot more, which I love anyway. So it's like me and Connor, obviously, as Barks describes it, is working as a piston. So if he goes, I stay and vice versa. So yeah, it gives us both opportunity to get up there and whip balls into the strikers and hopefully get some goals. Yeah, I'm buzzing. Yeah, trying to get, trying to aim for a couple of games now anyway. So just set your, set your standards high and that. And uh, yeah, got one today. Probably should have, should, have, should have had a few more to be fair, but go again next week. Joe is, a special talent, but he's a rough diamond. And what am I going to do about that? We're just going to work with him. The main thing is, psychologically, he beats himself up. He scored today, like you said, but he's going to be stressing over all those misses. Oh, do you know what? I think, it's, <clears throat> I think I have too much time to think about it. Sometimes I get in, in like, make runs and in positions where I've got the ball and I've got like 10 seconds to have a think about where I'm going to go. And then kind of, you know, before you know it, you've either missed a shot or something like that. But I think that's my main kind of weakness at the moment. I've just got to try and score my one-on-ones and start being more accurate and consistent like that. And then goals, more goals will come. Have you ever been specifically coached on striking and being a striker? No, I haven't. No, no, I've never been. Only apart from, I've only been at Holland Sports for the last couple of years. So apart from Holland Sports managers and that, no, nothing. I've not had any, any coach, proper coaching in it, no. Um, the second thing is to make him more tactically aware understand he's always involved, he's always got to be on the move, he's got to work hard to get back on side. When the fullback gets the ball, he needs to be arcing his run round. Uh, when the ball's played up to him, he needs to protect the ball. I know exactly how Joe needs to improve. And if we can get that message across to him, he'll be unstoppable. We've had a, another sending off today, so there's a discipline issue that we're going to have to tackle. 
Um, we'll do that behind closed doors with lads, with players, with what we're trying to do. I think Barks will probably say it's not discipline of one tackle or, or one silly thing. There's lots of bits of discipline, switching off at the wrong times, giving away silly fouls and stuff. And they're all the things that we're going to have to work on, but they're nice things to be able to work on when you've got three points in the bag. I'm not sure. I feel like some of it was just missed time tackles, but second half I feel like we needed it a little bit because sometimes with the 10 men we were getting overran and people doing the little fouls in the mid sort of helped us to slow the play down, get set up again and just go again, basically. Because without all that setting up, we're going to struggle because they were overlapping because of the spare man they had. So yeah, I think it was kind of perfect for us really, just to slow it all down and settle again. I think we're, we're embracing it because we all, we all love that kind of like, you know, we've got all the subs on the bench now and everything's proper and organised and structured. No one wants to turn up to a match and you've got like in Bob, Bob on the sideline, we don't even know who they are. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it, it, now it's organised and everyone knows. We're always fighting for fighting for a shirt as well, so everyone's fighting for a position. You don't know when you're going to start, or do you know what I mean? So it's all it's, it's good competition now, and you're fighting for two managers as well. So yeah, it's almost like you know when you start, there's a load of problems like a funnel, and and as you as you whittle it down, get the right characters in, change things, the number of problems are becoming smaller and more manageable. To stand here now and say the problems are ill discipline, that's something we can address straight away. There are problems in terms of being tactically astute and understanding how to mark and players are improving all the time. Um, I think we've turned a corner from childhood where they're all my mates and I wanted people to, I mean, it's our, as a grown man, I don't know if you say it's to like you or to, yeah, I guess, I guess you want people to like you to some extent in non-league football. They're paying to play, so there has to be some leverage for them to want to play for us. Hopefully the coaching, hopefully winning games. But we've turned a corner um, to still want them to like us if we can, but actually not taking any nonsense now. And we're kind of being a bit more brutal. You know, we're picking the best team, we're doing what's right, and we're getting the right characters on the field. And I can feel when I look at my team now, they're good characters that are buying into this, this evolution. Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs. If you feel like it, hit subscribe, hit like, hit the buttons, hit any buttons that you can find, not the, not the downvote button, we don't like that button, all the other buttons, because that helps us grow and then make more money and then we can make more shows.